I love this topic of logic. We're going to do an introduction to it. So I like this thing in here with uh, Spock from Star Trek. I find your lack of logic disturbing. A lot of people find that the logic topic is actually not logical. So we're going to talk about this a little bit, and we're going to, we're going to introduce some basic terms here. So the first thing we need to know is about propositions. That's what these here are. They're often named P or Q or R. They could really be any letter. And they're going to be defined as really anything. A proposition could be like, yeah, it rains today, or it could be like, you know, I don't know, it snows tomorrow. It could be, it could be anything. A proposition could be anything. It could be like a number is a, you know, even number. It could be anything. So propositions, we commonly say that they are either true or false. Uh, so I'll put a little, you know, true here or false. Uh, I guess they could be indeterminate if you really don't know. But in this case of logic, we're going to have things where we can tell if they're true or false. Then we have a negation. A negation just means that if a proposition is given as something like P, then the negation, we have to say not P. That's what negative means. Negative, right? Negate. Right? So we want to negate something. We have to say not P. So how do we say not P with this symbology here? We use the symbols. We use this term right here. This right here is what we do for negation. So negation is written as this weird little sort of like a backwards flipped L. So this right here, for example, could be like, you know, if it rains today, then the negation could be it does not rain today. Do you see the idea here? It's not hopefully that brain busting yet. Uh, so let's go a little bit further then. So if we look at this right here, we have these words like conjunction. Now here, we, I, I like to use the word and, and just like disjunction where you're going to use the word or. But we do have symbols for these, and this is going to be important. So for example, for ant, um, and is written as this symbol right here. So like this, this here is a symbol for ant. Uh, whereas or is written like this, that's a disjunction. Okay, so and tends to be this, and the way I remember it, you know, like the capital letter A for and, you know, if you just went like this, see? So this one right here, that symbol for it, it's like it's just missing the little the little A here. Uh, I don't know if that helped at all, but that's how I think of it. I just think of it like a little A here, for A for and. Now, what does that mean? It means that both statements need to be true. For example, if we wanted to do like P and Q, this could be a statement I could write like this, P and Q. What it means is both P and Q must be true in order for the result of this here to be true. So it's like it's hard to get into this club. In other words, they both have to be true, right? If even one of them is false, then no, this one here doesn't work. Uh, by contrast, there's disjunction. Either needs to be true. So, and they can both be true. So this right here, I use the word or. So for example, we could write like P or Q. So what that means is if P is true, then the result is true. If Q is true, the result is true. And if they're both true, also true. We've got this little thing right here called exclusive disjunction. It's not asked very often, but it's like or, except it just got a little line underneath it. What does it mean? It just means that both are not allowed to be true. All right. What does that mean for us? I think it makes a lot more sense to do this stuff if we have context. So let's actually just start jumping right into what are called truth tables. Ooh, I like this. It's not sure how to use logical operators or that's a fact. Get it? Because it's supposed to be and. These are these logical operators, or and and. Those are these, those are these words. It's actually really clever. I love this. That's from uh, Futurama. All right, so let's look at these truth tables. It's really like a game. Once you know the rules, it can be pretty. I put in like you know fun. I don't know about fun, but I think they're I think they're kind of fun. So let's see if we can actually solve some of these here. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to do this here. So if we just want P, then we have Q. What they tend to do with these truth tables, they like to run through the gamut. In other words, all the different choices of true versus false. In other words, you could have P and Q be true, true, but then it could go true, then false. It could go false, then true. It could go false, then false. See, they try to run through each combination. And in a question, you'll tend to be given these already. And then we'll just sort of run through these different truth tables. So let's see if we can do them. True, true. What does this right here, uh, this right here symbol mean? Do you remember what that means? You know, it helps to remind yourself. That means not. So if it's not P, all I have to do then is almost put like blinders. Don't look at Q at all. Just look at this. If this is true, then not P must be false. If this is true, that must be false. That must be then true because false becomes true. False becomes true. Not so hard. What about this one? This one means and. That means both P 
and Q must be true in order for this value here to be true. So look carefully here at P and Q here. P and Q, are they both true? Yes, so this is true. However, how about this one? Look at this, true and false. Because of that, are they both true? No, so that's why it's false. How about this, false, true? They're not both true, so we just put a false here. How about false, false? They're also not both true. That's the key thing right here is that and means they both must be true. It doesn't mean that they both have to be the same. It means they both must be true. How about this P or Q? Well, that's really easy to get into that club. Just one of them has to be true. So just look at this. True, true. Is one of them true? Yes. At least one. True, false. Yeah, one of them is true. False, true. There's one that's true. False, false. No. That's the only one that gets a false. What is exclusive disjunction? That's this one right here. This just means it's just like the or, except they're not allowed, look at this, they're not both allowed to be true. So if they both can't be true, then what do I do? Uh, everything else is gonna be the same except for this one right here. So in other words, it's gonna be just the same as this one, except when they've both been true, that one gets a false. Everything else is the same. So true is still true, still true, and still false. You see it's still the same as these ones. That's it? That's not so bad, is it? Let's do some more examples. So what about this one? So if we get a question like, for P and Q, draw the truth table for this thing. Uh-oh. How are we going to do this? I think it helps to build the pieces you're going to need. So I think first, maybe, let's do, um, let's do this thing. We're going to need this thing right here. That's not Q. Let's first draw that one. So can we first do that one? I think we can. Let's try it out here. So not Q. What's that? Well, it's opposite of Q. So if this Q is true, then that one's false. If that one's false, this one's true. This one's false. This one's true. Not brain busting yet. I think now we're actually ready to do this one right here. So P or not Q. That's what this means, right? Or this means not Q. So what do we do? We just look at P and not Q. We just compare P and not Q. And we look at one of them must be true in order for this to work. So P or not Q, is there one of them that's true? Because that's what or means. Yes, there's one of them that's true. How about P or not Q? Is there one of them true here? Yes, they're both true in fact. How about P or not Q here? Is there one of them true? Nope. And then this one right here, one of them is true as well. So that's how we can actually solve this. Uh, are you ready for one more example? This is rhetorical, right? Because I'm driving the video, so haha, -ha, unless you stop the video, of course. So let's do this one right here. Truth table, an even more gross looking one. Like, ugh. But we can totally do this. So I think what really helps to do here is first, let's start off by doing uh, this thing, maybe. We'll split it up. We'll do this piece first. I think that'll really help. So let's first of all do not Q. I think that might really help, right? So let's do not Q. We'll first do that one here and see how that one goes. So if we want to do not Q, because we're going to need a not Q here somewhere. Let's look at that one. So if we want not Q, what's that? Well, look at Q and do the opposite. So this is true. This is false. Oops. I'll go in green, I think, like I've been doing before. So not Q, that's false. Not Q is false. Then true, true, false, false, true, and true. So yeah, I'm just following this. The only thing that's important is to remember to be in the right column or else you can get really messed up. So now let's do maybe one that's P or not Q. Let's do that one. I think that's a good one to do. So P or not Q. Let's do, I mean, we need that piece first. So let's do that piece. I'll just draw myself a line here. Yeah, I'll make a nice straight line so it looks a bit prettier here. That one's all squiggly. Oh well. So if we look at this then. P or not Q, what does that mean? P or not Q, one of them must be true to have this one be true. So is one of them true? Yes. P or not Q, is one of them true here? Yes. P or not Q, there's one of them true. P or not Q, yes. Oh, they're both false here, P and not Q. They're both false, so that gets a false. This one here also gets a false. P or not Q, one of these is true. So that means that one gets true. And P or not Q, that one's also true. So you see how now all we have left to do is just do P or not Q and R. So really, this sounded really complicated, but what we really have to do now, do you see we've just built it up piece by piece? If we want to do and 
r, we just have to consider this one and r. They both must be true to get this one here true. So look at r and then this thing. This is an ant. So true and true. See, now maybe it'll help if I just sort of highlight these ones. So I'm just looking at this column now and this column now in order to do that one there. So maybe that helps us sort of keep track of them. Or maybe I just made it worse. I don't know. We'll see. So this one right here, this and this must be true. So true and true. Yeah, that's true. They're both true. False, true. Nope. You need both of them to be true. So nope. True, true. Yeah. They both got to be true. False, true. Nope. There's not both. Uh, nope. False, false. Nope. There's not one. There's not both true. Oh, true, true. They're both true here. And false, true. That's also false. So although this may seem a little bit sort of like brain busting, do you see these rules here? As long as you understand the rules between and, or, and not, you're pretty much good to go with these logic, uh, especially these truth tables. So I hope that helps you out. And in another video, we're going to go even further.